But first, there's been a series of warnings in recent times from experts who say we are not as prepared as we should be in the event of war. The Middle East and Ukraine show how quickly circumstances can change. And with China on our doorstep, we'd be mad to be as complacent as it seems our officials are. One such expert who isn't complacent, former head of Home Affairs Department Mike Pizzullo, who said in a speech last week, and I quote, we face, he says, before 2030, the credible prospect of having to defend Australia during a major war in the Indo-Pacific. Now, there's a lot that needs to happen to make Australia better prepared, but one common sense measure Pasulo has cited is to publish a new Commonwealth war book, which could, and he says this, deal with the entire span of civil defence and national mobilisation, which would be required to move to a war footing. As they say, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Joining me now, former Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson. Well, John, I, I, I found this uh, speech by Pizzullo, Mike Pizzullo to be fascinating, but the reminder about this war book, and I'll put it up on the screen for people at home, our last version of it was published in 1956, and, oh, you know, landscapes changed dramatically then, of course, but, but we all saw with COVID how hard it was slow it was to get the apparatus of government moving. You know, for the agencies to know what to do, uh, hospitals at one end, schools at the other, our borders, all of this stuff. We had huge issues with our supply chains, vaccines, masks, the whole box and dice. Now, in war, much harder still. I reckon we'd be mad not to working on a document like this. What do you think? Well, I can only agree with you. I would make the point at the outset that Mike Pizzullo is a very good strategic thinker. Uh, and, of course, his remarks have been widely reported in The Strategist, which is the Australian Strategic Policy Initiative's uh, magazine, premier pro uh, journal, uh, and they are very, very worthy of attention, but both belong to a category that apparently the government would rather not hear from. That is to say, they don't seem too keen on Aspie, and they, of course, sacked Mike Pizzullo. Uh, I'd be doing the opposite in both cases. I'd be upgrading Aspie, and I should declare I'm on the council of it, and I would be bringing Mike back into the security circles and seeking his advice because that's the, he's a very high-quality individual. Now, the war, war book in 1956 was there because it was a Cold War. It was a dangerous era. The Australian people knew it was a dangerous era. Everyone now is telling us that it's just as dangerous again now. They, they all are, from the Prime Minister down why we would not be looking at what defence would need as well as how it would be backed up if something goes wrong is mind-boggling. I am well advised that, in fact, Angus Houston and his report to the government made it plain that this area should be addressed. We've heard nothing about it from the government, and yet, in reality, with everything from what would we do to secure the shipping we need? We don't have any Australian flagged ships. In every other war, governments have, have commandeered and paid for the flagged vessels of their own nation because you've got to move, you have to be able to move your goods around. Uh, we don't have our fuel reserves. We don't know what we would do with the aliens in our midst. I mean, let's be really honest about this. We've got a real problem. We know there are people in our midst who we would have to assume hate us so much they wouldn't be on our side if something went wrong. What are the plans to identify those people and make sure that they don't become a danger from within if we're involved with external dangers that may involve our defence forces? The questions are endless. And, and this is Anzac Day. Are we really worthy descendants of those giants who did lay down their lives, 62,000 in the First World War alone, to ensure that we can live like we do today? Are we worthy descendants of them? I ask myself that every single year. I think a lot of Australians do, John. And I think I just spoke to a Vietnam veteran a moment ago and I asked the question, you know, we spend so much time now tearing down our national symbols. How do we turn the tide? He said, look, if you go after Anzac Day, you're picking a fight with a lot of Australians who have a war connection. But I have to say, I think we're all a bit asleep at the wheel with Australia Day. We thought it was a fringe fight and then, of course, local councils weighed in, the federal government weighed in, and now we're told we're supposed to feel shame about our history 
and, and, the, and the project to dismantle our institutions and our symbols won't just stop with Australia Day. So how do we fight back now, not wait for the inevitable? Two comments. Uh, I think you and I would share the view that the cream of our young people, particularly the younger, young Z, the, the, you know, Generation Z, the 26 years and under, the best of them, I think, are really waking up. And I think in part, particularly the male cohort, they're waking up because of the overreach of the activists who keep telling them how despicable they are, how, how they are the inheritors of this bad culture. Well, actually, it was your grandfathers and your great-grandfathers who were so terrible. That overreach, I think, is saying is, is pushing them back to sensible places, although it's radicalising some others and pushing them towards the Andrew Tate model of masculinity. And I think the other thing that I would say is that we desperately need leadership, and the two are related. Uh, you know, if you look at the Middle East, honestly, we're not being led as a country. If you look at defence, the obfuscation, the trickery around our supposed expansion in defence spending, it won't keep up with inflation. We wonder why young people are reluctant to be involved in the defence forces or to stay if they do go in. For half of them, there's no future there because the government talks big and there's nothing happening. Uh, you know, it's just, it's mind-boggling. I mean, as, as you and I have just sort of said, are we worthy descendants? I, I'm the son of a man who almost lost his life. Literally was one of those soldiers given up for dead by the medicos in the, on the battlefield in North Africa. I lived in the shadow of a man who risked all and almost lost all so that I could live the extraordinarily interesting and comfortable and free life that I've led. I'm not so sure that our current leaders recognise just how harshly history is going to judge them if they don't do the thing they're charged with, which is to lead, and there is no greater responsibility for the Prime Minister and the team around him than the defence of the nation. There is no greater responsibility. It's why we created the Commonwealth of Australia. 